I know a lot of you are waiting for this, so let's do it. Hello guys and welcome to another MKMobile Mobile video. Guys, today we are ranking all diamonds in the game because I'm 99.9% .9 sure that we won't be getting any new diamonds until the end of 2021. With that said, I just want to let you know how I'm ranking all these cards. It is not about how strong the character is. It's not about how strong a character is in one team. For example, if I, I am, let's say, saying uh, I'm evaluating Ronnie Takeda, I don't care whether Ronnie Takeda is great in Ronnie team. For me, a diamond card is uh, better, or let's say it has advantage, if it can perform really good in many teams. If a diamond is performing good in one team, that's not really good for me. And I know a lot of people will say, yeah, but Ronins are supposed to work in Ronin team. Yeah, I know that. However, there are a lot of cases in the game where you won't be able to use Ronin Takeda and Ronin team. First thing first, you won't have the other two characters. Second option, you'll have the other two characters, but really, really bad fusion. Third option, you're playing survival mode and let's say one of the other two characters are not giving you any bonuses. So yeah, the game actually can put you in a situation where you don't have to or you shouldn't be using all three Ronins in a team. So in that case, a diamond character that can fit in many teams is much, much better than a diamond character that is good only at one team. So with that said, uh, there are a lot of factors that constitute a good card in my opinion. It boils down to how strong the character is, how much damage he can do, how versatile the character is, in other words, for example, Classical Kane is probably the most versatile character in the game, he can join almost any team and add tremendous value to it. Also, it's also important how great the character is at Fusion Zero. It is important how easily it is to certain character be supported, or how easily it is for him to support others, but that's part of the versatile of the how flexible the character is. Uh, and another thing, I also want to know whether the character is good at survival mode, whether the character is good in towers, and against bosses. So all these factors combined will constitute whether a card is good or not. Also, another factor that's really, really important for me is how unique the character is. Or in other words, if a character is great at something, is it something unique or it can be replicated by other cards? So in other words, is there uh, any other reason to use this character apart from the fact that you have him? And we're going to get to that later. Now let's start with Black Dragon Cabal. Black Dragon Cabal is useful in survival mode, pretty good because you don't have to worry about Assassin Jade. He has a block of a special tool that deals a lot of damage. Unfortunately, the only drawback of Black Dragon Cabal is that he doesn't really uh, have useful passive for survival mode. You don't want to lose anybody in survival mode. Also, he's not the greatest fighter, he's an assassin type of character. So I am I think probably A plus A, let's let's put him as an A. He's a good one, but I don't think he deserves being A plus or S. Before update 3.0, I would put him A plus or S. After update 3.0, after we got survival mode, uh, Black Dragon Cabal is not really that great. He's still a very good card, but not one of the very best in the game. Assassin Kitana, uh, she's a C. Assassin Kitana is useful in Assassin team. Uh, however, she has some kind of a clumsy basic attacks. She's extremely squishy, her special 2 doesn't deal a lot of damage, her special 1 cannot kill, and recently she got buffed, but I still don't think that she's that great. Also, she's not that useful in towers against bosses, I mean, I'm not saying she's worthless, but she's nowhere near the best cards, and she it doesn't really excel outside of an assassin team, so sorry, she's a C. Even though she has her advantages, for example, she's the card with the highest power generation, uh, base level, where she has pretty great power generation, but still, that's not enough to compensate for all her imperfections. Black Dragon Kano again is a C, a low damage. This card is good in you know, Black Dragon team, outside of Black Dragon team, not that great. However, I think that probably a B, yeah, B will be better because Black Dragon Kano has two very useful debuffs on his combo ender, so that's pretty cool. In general, I don't hate this card, but I just believe that uh, there are many, many diamonds that are much better than Black Dragon Cabal and Kano. Can you in particular? Black Dragon Tremor, I'm sorry, he's a C. Uh, and now, this is the reason why I believe Black Dragon Tremor is a C. I know a lot of people will be shocked. Oh my god, how can you put Black Dragon Tremor? And this is the last time I'll be talking about why I believe this character is bad, because uh, I have talked about it multiple times. A lot of people are saying that he's the safest opener in the game, if given his equipment, and I, I agree, he is. But apart from that, he doesn't shine anywhere else. Uh, for one thing, he's not really the greatest damage dealer. You cannot do, for example, he has Tunnel Special 1 in gold form, but you cannot use it to keep the enemy stun locked because the moment you use it, you're going to lose the stun. Also, the moment you use anything, you're going to lose the 100% resistance to the boss, which is bad. 
For example, let me give you an example. If I have Pankasi and I want to replicate the same thing, I can do that. I'll just give her her equipment. I'll give her the Black Dragon Tremor piece, which is called the Earth Realm Elemental Face Mask. That's 80% resistance to the buffs. I'll have the Hawk Stance, I believe, with another 20% resistance to the buffs. There you go, I have 100% resistance to the buffs. But the moment I do special attack, I am not going to lose it. You see, Black Dragon Tremor has an interesting design, but his execution is poor. If uh, it was, let's say, to choose which stance you're going to have until the end of the game, that would be much better. If you want him to be a the tank, then just play in gold mode. You just have stun on special one, you, you have resistance to all the buffs, awesome. If you want to do damage, then just choose his lava form so that you can have it all the way. This is a very good way to make Black Dragon Tremor better. At this current state, I don't like him. I think he has good design, but bad execution, so a C, sorry. Bounty Hunter Red in Black, uh, he's, uh, uh, he's an A+. Plus. I think that he's better than Cabal because he's a greater fighter and he's much safer. And there is one very good plus about uh, Bounty Hunter Red in Black or Black Dragon Red in Black that he can give you bonus in every single survival season. Every single one, this guy can give you bonuses. He can be easily supported. He has unblockable special one that has Creepo. And uh, he kind of suffers against, for example, characters, uh, let's say, formations that have um, the Centaurian Defense talent, but all you have to do is just take a look. And if they have the Centaurian Defense, never make sure that this ability is unblockable, and this will save you you committing suicide. In general, really versatile card, one of the main reasons why I love it so much. Once again, it's one of the best cards for survival mode. It can join any team, add value to it, incredible. Actually, not add value, be supported by it, and that's something, right? Circle of Shadow Jax. He's... Uh... Circle of Shadow Jax is a B. Two unblockable special attacks, you have to love that. No character with two unblockable special attacks is a horrible character, and Jax is not an exception. Of course, his passive has to be rework. I love the current state of his passive like a design, but not like an execution. So I want them to increase for at least two seconds the duration of his immunity, or make sure that when the enemy is doing special two, this can be activated before the special attack, not after the end of the special attack. I never, I never played with this uh, character lately, but I still believe that this is the case. It activates after you do special two. Uh, if they change that, probably I'm going to put him as a B plus, but still he's not an A. Circle of Shadow Kitana is again a B, a useful character in survival mode, even though she has some of the worst passives in the game, in the sense that words part of the passive, not like totally word passive. The problem with Kitana is that she makes your team immune to, immune to fear. <laughs> Why would you want to be immune to fear? <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> Who needs that? But anyway, she does it. But in general, her passive is useful. You, it can be used in many, many ways, so it's pretty cool. And you can spam her special one. Uh, she has increased little chances uh, once the characters are below a certain point of health. And I believe it was, I, I for, to, quite honestly, I forgot this part of her passive. Was it when they're bleeding on, or when they were below a certain percentage of health? Anyways, I'm saying that uh, she's a good card, but not one of the best. Circle of Shadow Kung Lao is an A+, without any doubt. Circle of Shadow Kung Lao, uh, you literally need one tower blue piece, which can be maxed easily now, because this is one of the towers that wasn't stingy, in a way that you have tons of um, uh, blue drops, so you can easily max it. Or if you don't max it, then just buy one pack and that's it. And with this equipment, uh, Circle of Shadow Kung Lao is immortal. You can do special too, which will clean every single debuff you have, it will trigger regeneration, it will give you shield. Incredible, just incredible. Just character cannot be killed. Uh, not that great at Fusion Zero though, so in order for him to work you need to have him at higher Fusion. Uh, Quan Chi is an A, uh, he has basic attack block breaker, which basically means he doesn't require a piece that gives block breaker, of course it would be good to have, but it's not really a huge necessity. Uh, in general very useful in survival mode, against bosses just okay, and uh, yeah I would say that he's a very very used character, however like Black Dragon Cabal, he's just good, but not one of the best. I cannot say really something bad for him. I just believe that he lacks something in order for him to be a top tier diamond. Circle of Shadow Sub Zero, same. Uh, I kind of dislike his basic attacks, though this guy can deal insane amount of damage. His special two can miss from distance, uh, and uh, yeah, he's he's just okay. But once again, not in one of the best, the very best diamonds in the game. Still, if I have to divide uh, the diamonds into three groups bad or let's say decent, good and great, he'll be in a good, he, he's a good character without any doubts. 
Dale Dreter in black is an A-plus, amazingly good character, he can be used for special one, that's a very fun uh, thing to do. He can be used for his special too, uh, he can be used outside of the other team because he's an amazing fighter, he doesn't really require the other two girls. Of course, if you have Dale Kitana, he'll be amazing, so he kind of loses a little bit of value if put outside of the other team, but he can still perform great. Uh, special two can be done for zero cost, special one can be done for zero cost, he has team power drain. Really, really good character, so I don't understand why... He Players don't really use him that often. The other day Jade, I'm sorry, the other day Jade used to be an S, but after what they did with her passive, she's hardly a B. Uh, not that reliable anymore, her passive relies on chance, so uh, basically the moment you get uh, your shield up, in order to use it you have to just stop hitting the enemy and pray that they're going to do special attack immediately, because if they don't, you'll be in a lot of trouble. So yeah, she used to be insanely good, now she's just decent, and that's sad. Dead Dead Kitana is an A+, one of the queens in survival mode, uh, sadly against bosses she's not that useful, but in almost every single other game mode she's amazing, she can join any outward team and add value to it, and on top of that she's amazing at Fusion Zero, so if you have her at Fusion Zero that's all it takes, so an A+. Dark Emperor Lucane or Circle of Shadow Lucane. Now before I get to Circle of Shadow Lucane, I just want to mention that for S I'm going to be using not many characters, so not every single one deserves to be an S. If a character is an S, that means he's perfect. Circle of Shadow Lucane is not perfect because his passive doesn't work outside of survival mode. It works partially and that's not really that great. Apart from that, he's, he's a very useful character, one of the best characters in the game. As you can see, I rate him as an A+. However, I don't consider him to be one of the very, very, very best characters in the game. Amazing basic attacks, a useful special 1 debuff, a great special 2. However, a huge part of his passive doesn't work in towers. That's bad. Dark Fate Terminator is an A. Uh, very good tank, probably one of the best tanks in the game. However, uh, also he has um, potential to be great disabler, thanks to the fact that he has uh, cripple on special 1. However, he's so boring to play, man. He's so boring to play. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he's not really that great at Fusion Zero, apart from his potential to eat X-rays and stay alive. Uh, so, yeah, i not a fan of this card. I think they're much, much better tanks if you want to use somebody as a tank. And in general, the value of tanks in this game quite honestly, it's not really that high at the moment, uh, basically, if you're on offensive, it's always better, so he's an A, very good card, but I wouldn't rank him as one of the very, very best cards in the game, still, uh, yeah, kind of, no, he's an A, I'm sorry, uh, in his endoskeleton form, he's close to useless. Fire God Lucane is an A plus or an A. I don't know, I have, I don't have huge experience with this guy, so put him as an A, or I don't know, uh, yeah, as an A. Uh, one of the problems, by the way, there's another thing that I forgot to mention in the beginning. Uh, another factor that decides whether a character is good is how item reliant he is. If, if a character can uh, excel without uh, needing to have great pieces like uh, maxed out epic tower pieces, then that's better than a character who gets extremely strong, but only if you have this and that piece. So, yeah. Fire Good Lucane, from my initial observations, he requires a lot of good items to become unstoppable. If you don't have those items, he will get there, but in time. And in general, I'm not convinced that he's better than, the, for example, a Circle of Shadow Lucane or Classic Lucane, he's not better. And uh, against bosses, his passive almost cannot do anything, and that's really sad. So uh, he is an A, sadly. Nightmare Freddy Krueger is an A, amazing damage potential, however, he's item reliant, he requires his glove. And this guy is also kind of skill required at Fusion Zero, he's not great, he cannot be supported easily, he cannot support anybody, and in general, uh, yeah, he's a very risky character, so he can literally one-shot diamonds with one special one, but if you made a single mistake, you, you're a goner, he's gone. So this is the main reason why he's an A. Also against boss, is not really that cool. Classic Goro is an A, uh, very versatile card, can join literally any team and add value, unblockable special one that deals tons of damage, his special 2 is also okay, he can come back which makes him one of the safest um, openers and tanks in the game because they kill him, that's not a problem, he comes back, so in general uh, I don't understand why people hate him, probably because he's slow, but this doesn't matter because he requires 2 hits in order to get to special 1, and in general there's another thing uh, concerning Classic Goro, the moment you attack him out, uh, he can tag back in, in 3 seconds, this is how fast he can tag back in, which makes, for example, him pairing with Classic Raiden incredibly little, because you can literally tag in Classic Raiden any 3rd second, and that's awesome. Basically, you tag him in, you do special 1, he's ready to be tagged out. Incredible. 
Guardian Terminator is again an A, a very fun card but a chance reliant and I don't really like cards that rely chance. He can turn the tides of a match but for example if you are facing Shao Kahn, Shao Kahn does special 2 to you, uh, your Terminator can get killed. Also this is one of the worst cards in survival mode at low fusion because if he decides to help somebody with fusion 0 <laughs> he is going to get killed and you don't want that so unusable until you, you get him at least fusion 6, 7 or 8 for survival mode. Hellspawn Scorpion is an A plus or an S. Uh, uh, it's really difficult, man. Okay, he's an A+. One of the best supports in the game. Incredibly useful at Fusion Zero. His special one kind of sucks, but he has some blockable special too. Of, yeah, one of the best characters in the game. Considering the fact how many amazing martial artists we have, this guy is simply unstoppable. Injustice 2 Raiden is an S. Absolute gorgeous card as a boss cure. Amazing. Uh, in any game mode, amazing. The only problem... Uh, Injustice Raiden has is that he cannot be easily supported because he's an Elder God. Uh, this is probably his main drawback. Apart from that, he's one of the fewer cards in the game that can do fine without Block Breaker. Remember that, guys. Assassin Jade, she's, she's an A. When she works, she's amazing. She deals insane amount of damage. When she doesn't work, she isn't amazing. That's the main reason why she's an A. Even though I could I consider putting her as a B plus, but no, I think A is a good uh, good thing for her. Classic Jax is a B together with Circle of Shadow Jax. Uh, two unblockable special attacks, uh, pretty good. Sadly, the main problem with this card is that the passive is horrible, really horrible passive. Uh, I mean, <laughs> what can you do with this passive? For example, it has 20% chance not to take damage from special attack and then nothing happens, right? Assassin Jade has 40% chance not to, get, uh, not to get damage from special attack and then she deals insane damage to you and she cripples you while Jax doesn't do anything. Like, this is the difference between Classic Jack Passive and Assassin Jade Passive. Even though they're kind of similar, quite honestly. Alright, Classic Rain is an S. Amazing character, simply amazing. Classic Rain can be great at Fusion 0, can be great at Fusion 10. He's an amazing fighter, one of the best boss killers, one of the best supports in the game. So what can I say? Classic Rain is simply an S. If you want, you can check my review on him one of the best cards in the game, uh, so yeah, he is a definitely an S. Classic Reptile, A+, plus, really good passive, uh, and uh, he can be used for Fusion Zero because he can stack so many poisons. Uh, also one of the greatest cards when it comes to chaining their basic attacks, even at Fusion Zero you can keep the enemy occupied for tens of minutes without the enemy being able even to hit you back, so really one of the very best fighters in the game. Classic Lucane, Total S, should I say why? Very good at killing bosses, even now after the nerf of his special too. He can join any team and be valuable. He's incredibly useful at Fusion 0, at Fusion 10. He's amazing, really good at survival mode. The only problem with Classic Lucane is just he's a martial artist, which means that he doesn't give you bonuses in many, many seasons. And that's really unfortunate. Classic Raiden, an S, the best card in survival mode in my opinion. The only difference, the only card that gives you bonuses more seasons is the Bounty Hunter Erin Black, but the uh, unlike Bounty Hunter Erin Black or uh, Black Dragon Erin Black, Classic Raiden is 10 times better fighter, he just destroys teams, he just tag in and kill everybody. Now he's awesome in towers, the only problem he has is that he isn't the greatest against bosses, he can do, I have recorded many many battles with Classic Raiden against bosses, but I just convinced myself Injustice Raiden is the way to go. Classic Raiden can work in certain scenarios, but the problem is that there is no way for him to snare the enemy and that's really a problem. Also his special to deals. Uh, not really the greatest damage in the world, but at the same time it gives tons of power to the enemy boss and that's bad. Even though this can be fixed by a specific item, in general I admit that Classic Raiden isn't really the greatest choice for boss fights. Cold War Scorpion is an A. Uh, I never liked this card for some reason, he was always boring to me. Even though very good special 1, very good special 2, he can do well outside of uh, Cold War team, but probably it's just me, but I never found this uh, character like amazing and I don't think that he's better than uh, the cards that are an A+. Uh, also at Fusion Zero not really that great. Cold War uh, Sonya Blade is a B. <sighs> Her passive used to be 10 times better when she was a gold. Yes, there was a time guys when this card was a gold. But they decided that she had to be a diamond, so just they changed the frame, they gave her an extra slot for equipment, and the result is that they kind of destroyed her passive. Even though they birthed her passive in a way, but they destroyed the versati uh, versatility of her passive. Before she was a diamond, she would give shield to any single character forever, I mean, until broken, of course. Now she gives shield, I believe, for 8 to 10 seconds. Not really that great, sorry. 
Cold War Sub-Zero is an A+. I think Cold War Sub-Zero is slightly better than Circle of Shadow Sub-Zero for some reason. Uh, it, the, the, the difference is really tiny, but still I prefer Cold War Sub-Zero. Also, uh, he's, he can be okay outside of a Cold War team, even though in Cold War team he shines. And in my opinion, he's better against bosses uh, compared to Circle of Shadow Sub-Zero. Not by a great margin, but still better. Cold War Scarlet uh, is an... I don't have huge experience with her. But still, I think she's an A, even though she has um, regeneration special too. I never really liked this character, and I prefer the original Cold War team. Oh, not a bad character, without any doubt, but not really that great. Oh my god, Leatherface, he's a D, the worst diamond in the game, without any doubts. Uh, should I say why? Okay, he deals a lot of damage, and my question is, so what? Like, uh, usually, if you're playing in survival mode, Usually the cards will have somewhere between 150 and 300k health. It doesn't matter whether you do uh, 300k or 500k damage because you're going to kill the enemy anyways. Actually, it's bad to do 500k damage because the chance of you triggering the enemy's revenant increases. So, uh, it, at some point it doesn't matter how much damage you do. The only place where it matters is against bosses and this guy is horrible against bosses. Like, we can all agree on that, right? Also, his passive doesn't trigger in 50% of the case, at least in my opinion. I tested it multiple times. The chance for me is like 20-30%. to 30%. And let's say that um, I am wrong. It does trigger at 50%. Problem is that in a lot of cases, uh, this passive of Leatherface, when he interferes with the chainsaw, will trigger Revenant and will, for example, if you have stunned the enemy, he is that low and you want to finish him off with one punch, Leatherface will interfere, he will hit the enemy with his chainsaw and your enemy will tag out after that. Because you don't have time to finish him off. This is how bad this character is. Also, horrible synergy in a Nightmare team. Uh, basically, this guy is good only if you want to have fun and you do some kind of a troll team. I don't think he excels in any other team in the game. Even in a Nightmare team, if I just remove Leatherface and put, for example, Classic Lucane, I'll have a better team. So, yeah. MK11 Scorpion is an S. A total boss at Fusion Zero, great in every single game mode. Uh, dual class character, which basically means that he'll give you bonuses in more for survival, most, um, survival mode uh, seasons. Amazing. Nothing to say here. Uh, Jade is an A+. Uh, I hate facing her and I don't really like playing with her because in a lot of cases you rely on chance. Whether she works, she's amazing. If she doesn't work, she's not that amazing. I prefer using her as a support, quite honestly, even though she's amazing as a fighter. Still, I don't consider her as an S character. So the S is re re just reserved for the very, very, very best characters in the game. And she is very close, but not really that close. MK11 Cabal is a B... Oh, sorry. MK11 Cabal is... A f yeah, he... I don't really like MK11 Cabal. So... No, he's an A. I have to... Agree. Actually, he's a B+, but I'm not going to create a secret, uh, specific tier for him. Uh, problem again with the other Cabal after update 3.0, his passive is kind of worthless in the part where he does X-ray after his enemy dies. You don't want him to lose an enemy. Uh, against bosses, he's not really that great. The only thing good about MK11 Cabal, of course, he's also uh, like a su support and assassin, like the other Cabal. Uh, the only thing good is that he gives you immunity to stun, uh, so you don't have to worry about circle, meeting Circle of Shadow Lucane in Faction Wars, and that's huge. Strike for Johnny Cage, a total S, amazing card, amazing card. Of course, he shines in uh, Strike Force team, but he can be great outside of a Strike Force team. One of the top three best boss cures in the game. Uh, in survival mode, it's amazing. In towers, it's amazing. He basically excels in any single game mode, so. Really, really great card, nothing to say there. Uh, his only problem, he has kind of low stats, but uh, yeah, it's not a big deal. Nightwolf, I'm sorry, Nightwolf is an, is an A. Uh, I think that he has better value as a support rather than a fighter. Uh, he's a versatile card, but I don't think he ranks anywhere here. It's like he's just an Elder God, so yeah, not really the greatest card in the game. But probably it's just me not having a lot of experience with him. But probably if I max him anytime soon, I'll, I'll let you know how good he is when he's max maxed <laughs> Once maxed out. Alright, MK11 Noob Cybot. MK11 Noob Cybot. I think that I, has to, I have to put him here. Really great, even at Fusion Zero. Amazingly good value. Uh, basically, this card can uh, save you in a lot of difficult battles. And when he's maxed out with the correct equipment, he can be amazing. Also, if you're trying hard, I, I rather think that he's ki kind of easier to tame. Not really that much easy, but still. Uh, I, I appreciate the fact that he's kind of versatile. Basically, he can help all Netherrealm characters, not only MK11. Uh, and his shadow 
I mean, you can do so much stuff with this shadow. So yeah, one of the best characters in the game, I fully agree. Even though, yeah, I think he's between S and A+, but I'm just going to put him as an S for now. Uh, MK11 Raiden is an A+, even though I dislike this character after um, we have MK11 Ra uh, Rain. This guy is a total boss killer, he can literally kill 3 bosses with one special 2. His special 2 is incredibly strong, all you have to do is make sure that the boss team is team soaked, and you just unleash MK11 Raiden and kill them all. Uh, yeah. MK11 Rain is an A+, another useful character, extremely useful in survival mode, and uh, against bosses, pretty good. The only problem with MK11 Rain is that you require a specific item in order for him to team soak, which item you can get only specific tower, so yeah, this is the reason why he's an A+. Shansung, I, again I don't have a lot of experience with this guy, but I'll put him as an A+, uh, because of so many things that you can do with him, he has a block of special attacks that can heal him, uh, he can uh, adopt the form of any other character in the game, so I will put him somewhere between A+, and A. Uh, I don't really have a lot, a lot of experience with him, so I'll do a lip service to the Shansung uh, fans and putting him as an A+. Uh, MK11 Sub-Zero, again an A+. Extremely valuable card almost anywhere. He's a support, he's an assassin, uh, and the most important thing is MK11, which means that he can support one of the best cards in the game, MK11 Scorpion, MK11 Noob Cyborg. He has incredibly useful synergy with them. Also, incredibly good even at Fusion Zero. Pankasi, she's an A or a B. I'll put her as an A because she can do outside of Strike Force Team, she can do well. Uh, and even at Fusion Zero, she's kind of okay if you manage a way to keep her alive, which isn't really that difficult after all. Uh, after she tags in, she applies 10 million debuffs on the enemy, so you might be able to keep her alive so she can be useful even at Fusion Zero. And in Strike Force team, of course, she can be useful at Fusion Zero by simply having her passive being activated throughout the length of the game. Ravenous Melina is an A. Amazing card, what can I say? Ravenous Melina. Uh, she can be used as an assassin, she can be used as a support thanks to the fact that she increases the uh, DOT damage. Her drawbacks, very squishy. Her special 2 is no longer blockable, there was a time when it wasn't blockable. And uh, yeah, very risky, because in other case she's going to trigger Revenant, which can get her killed after that. So, uh, incredibly uh, character that can reward, give you a lot of rewards if you play her correctly, but uh, she's risky. And not really that great against bosses, so yeah. Uh, Jason is an A, Jason is a good card, however, he relies on chance, and it's not easy to support this guy, so he's an A. Not bad card, but uh, all the other cards are both just, just better. Ronin Kenshi is a B, in fact, I'll put all three Ronins here, instead of, uh, as, apart from Ronin Takeda. Ronin Kenshi, actually, no, you know what, uh, Ronin Kitana is going to get here, and the reason why I believe Ronin Kitana is an A uh, is simple, because Ronin Kitana is a dual class character. Also. Uh, the, the, the other, actually the two guys, Kitana and Kenshi, has sky high toughness, but once again Kitana has an edge because she can also power drain, and Kenshi, he's just straightforward, you deal damage or die, while Kitana is more versatile. Actually, on second thought though, Kitana is not really that great against bosses, while Kenshi is much much better against bosses, so I don't know what to do here. Probably, you know what, I'm going to do it like this. I think they deserve it. And don't, uh, don't forget the fact that running Kitana basically can destroy people, uh, with her toughness, in the sense that they do zero damage to her. Like, I literally recorded the video when Assassin Jade, maxed out Assassin Jade, does special 2 on my Ronin Kitana, I was not blocking, and special 2 of Assassin Jade dealt like 1000 damage to my Ronin Kitana. With the correct talents and the correct equipment, it doesn't have to be tower equipment, Ronin Kitana is simply amazing. Ronin Takeda, not that much. Uh, he, out of the three Ronins, I consider him to be the worst, and that's unfortunate. He just... He just doesn't do any good. <laughs> Alright, the next S is, of course, Strike for Scorpion. Amazing character, even at Fusion Zero. In every team, he adds value, so great. Actually, and also, do not forget the fact he's an amazing fighter. Everything MK11 Scorpion can do, Strike for Scorpion can do as well, even at Fusion Zero. However, it is a little bit more uh, difficult in the sense that you need to have the correct talents, you need to have the correct equipment, you know, to make his uh, stun lock loop works, while well, with MK11 Scorpion slightly easier, but still, one of the best fighters in the game, not only supports. Conqueror Shao Kahn is an A, uh, really good card in survival mode, solves many issues, the only problem, he's item reliant, also his uh, brutality doesn't work against bosses, for some weird reason, they can do it like regular brutality with when the boss is below 25% chance, but for some reason they don't do that, uh, I don't know why, after all this card is exclusive and you can literally get one copy every 4 months, so if you start playing now, you'll probably max out Shao Kahn 
I don't know, in two years. So at least what they can do is make, make sure that, um, let's say, his uh, brutality against bosses unlocks high fusion, let's say fusion 8, 9 or 10, something like this. But for now it doesn't unlock at any fusion, so it never works against bosses. Assassin Scarlet is an A. I think she is the best Scarlet overall. I prefer her to Cold War Scarlet because Assassin Scarlet has perfect chaining for her special one. You do um, tap, 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 and then you do combo and then you do special one. Sounds familiar, right? So you can do that with Assassin Scarlet. It's pretty cool uh, and she deserves a place. Even though she's not really that great outside of an Assassin team, once again, she's good but not great. And uh, out of all Scarlets, I reckon she's the best fighter. MK11 Scarlet is a C or a B. Or what is what is she? She's a B. Yeah, she's a B. She's not a C. Uh, once again, you have to do 10 million bazillion things in order for her uh, thing to work, to her uh, vampirism. Also, she is bad at Fusion Zero because Fusion Zero is extremely risky to try to kill anybody using her in survival mode. Against bosses, she's trash. I mean, I, okay, I don't want to say she's trash, but definitely not one of the best fighters against bosses. Uh, and there are better healers in MK11 team than her. For example, Shan Tsung. I don't have to do 10 million things in order to heal, right? Uh, and even uh, MK11 Rain is better, right? You just tag somebody out and then in 5 seconds tag him in. There you go, I don't have to do 10 million bazillion things in order to activate something. I have to agree though that her uh, thing uh, looks pretty good, cool, the, the, the rain. And Davora is a C, uh, she's fun, uh, she can join many teams and be versatile, be useful. However, her passive is horribly outdated and her passive doesn't really give you a lot of stuff. It's just the eternal poison and that's it. The critical damage boost is simply laughable, not really that great. Alright guys, so this is my ranking. Do you agree with it? I bet you do, right? <laughs> of course, if you disagree, that's fine. Uh, you can let me know in the comments why and where you disagree with me. And yeah, that's all for me. See you next time, guys. Take care and stay safe. Perfect.